Hi, I'm Art Hunt, one of the pastors here at Cornerstone. Uh, this devotional comes from Esther 4, where we read, Who knows, uh, but that you have come to your position for such a time as this. The book of Esther is a, a bit of a strange book in the Bible. Uh, for starters, you have uh, Esther winning this beauty contest, being chosen queen by a pagan Persian despot. Uh, which in fact has caused some people to suggest the book should be titled What's a Nice Jewish Girl Like You Doing in a Place Like This? Perhaps more significant is the fact that God's name is never directly mentioned in the book. God, as it were, is missing in action. And yet while God is seemingly absent, he is behind the scenes, or perhaps better said, he is behind the scene, S-E-E-N. Uh, Romans 8.28 reminds us God is silently, uh, silently, silently working all these things together for good. And he, and he was, and he is, and he does. But in this particular passage of scripture, God does so by using a young Jewish woman named Esther and her uncle Mordecai. And he uses them to save his people from a uh, certain extinction. And chapter four, if you know the book, is the turning point. It's the linchpin that determines everything that follows. It is a matter of life and death itself. Namely, that Esther, in the unseen providence of God, has been born, she has been raised up, placed in the situation in which she finds herself for the well-being, the salvation of other people. And to her credit, Esther, albeit reluctantly, Esther, though, steps up to the plate and she obeys and God uses her obedience for his glory and their good. And by way of application, I think there's a fundamental truth in this passage, which is simply that if you and I, uh, we too, we have been born, we have been raised up, we have been placed on this earth for this particular time and place in which we find ourselves for a similar purpose, that if we are Christians especially, we have come into Jesus' kingdom and into his family for such a time as this. D.L. Moody was fond of saying that the world has yet to see what God can do with a man or a woman fully consecrated to him. And by God's help, he said, I aim to be that man. So there are three thoughts I wanna leave with you to ponder and to pray about during uh, such a time in which we find ourselves. Uh, number one, remember this that in a crisis, it really doesn't matter uh, about your age, your supposed abilities or lack thereof, whether you can get around well or you're lying in a hospital bed or on lockdown in an assisted living facility. If you are breathing and conscious, you can pray. You can always pray. In fact, if anything in this situation uh, that we find ourselves, it has offered us an almost unheard of opportunity to spend time with our Heavenly Father, to seek His face, and to pray. Uh, we can seek and to bless, to encourage also, and to comfort someone else outside of ourselves, to turn the focus off ourselves onto someone else around us. So remember, number one, it's not your abilities, it's your availability. Number two, to remember that God most often does His best work behind the scene, S-E-E-N. God most often does his best work when we're not even aware. And so to pray and ask him to do in your heart, in your life, and in the lives of those around you, and to seek God's blessing on uh, those that need Jesus in particular. And so number three, re to remember that God delights in using ordinary people with feet of clay, people who don't necessarily see themselves as all that gifted or talented. They don't view themselves as great spiritual giants, uh, people who more often than not are clueless that God's even using them, uh, but he is. People like you and people like me who have been born for such a time as this. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us in this time, in this place. You have created us and brought us here for a purpose and help us to be still and listen 
and to be part of that process, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.